Hello and welcome. This is a Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode, I would like to discuss the de-icing procedure. Now I've seen that uh, those of you who own GSX, I personally don't have the possibility to call de-icing trucks and simulate de-icing. Now I've watched a few videos of people doing that and it seems they just call the trucks, they spray the aircraft and then they go and take off. Now I'm afraid it's not that straightforward. There are actually some procedures you need to follow. If you would like to follow the real world procedures for de-icing, then just keep watching and I will try and explain everything to you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, generally speaking, there are two ways an aircraft gets de-iced and anti-iced. So one is it is done at the gate. So like here, uh, we are currently at Hamburg Airport. This is actually where my last de-icing took place. And in Hamburg, they do this at the gate. The second option is that it is done on the way to the runway. Now both have advantages and disadvantages. As you can probably imagine, the big advantage here is that the engines are stopped. We don't use any fuel. We're just at the gate. They de-ice the aircraft and once it's all done, we push back, start the engines and take off. Now, of course, the disadvantage with that is if there's heavy snowfall and there's a lot of traffic and some delays on the way to the runway, maybe by the time we get to the runway, the wing is contaminated again and we actually can't take off. So that is a risk, which is why some airports de-ice the aircraft just before you enter the runway. So that obviously is a huge advantage because the aircraft gets de-iced, you enter the runway and take off. So it doesn't matter how much it snows or if there's freezing fog, you will always have a nice clean wing. Disadvantage with that, of course, is that you have to do it with engines running. If there's a lot of aircraft de-icing, you have to wait in line, which means there's going to be a whole bunch of aircraft sitting there with engines running and yeah it's producing noise and of course pollution so you know both have their advantages and disadvantages but it's not just in terms of aircraft and uh, wing cleanliness so to speak it is also different in terms of procedures in the cockpit time wise the procedure here at the gate for us pilots is not so great and we will be discussing this in a moment yeah but like I said, everything has advantages and disadvantages. So let's start with the first procedure, which means we are here at the gate. We have uh, some light snow flakes coming down, you can see, and maybe some frost has just formed on the wings. So we've informed the airport that we will require some de-icing and uh, they will provide that service to us now. So de-icing fluid is actually some pretty nasty stuff, uh, especially if you use anti-ice as well. It's not something you want to get anywhere near people or especially passengers. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that all doors are closed. And also we need to ensure that the ground power is disconnected, at least here at this airport, that's one of the procedures. The ground power is connected to the jet bridge. So here in Hamburg, we now have to first close the door and remove the jet bridge and make sure that the ground power is disconnected before we can start the procedure. Okay, all doors are closed and if we look up here, the avail light has disappeared, which means the ground power has been disconnected. We can also see that the air bridge has disappeared. So before we get started, we have to read a checklist. Uh, now everything is done here on the overhead panel. So just give me a moment, I believe. Yes, here we go. So I'm going to do it like this. Uh, it's probably a bit easier for you to follow. So before we get started, we need to make sure the parking brake is set that I have already done. Then we need to make sure the cabin pressure mode selector is on auto, which it is. 
Next, we need to switch off engine bleed 1 and 2. The reason why we do this is because we now want to isolate the cabin from the outside world. We do not want any air to be sucked into the cabin because there's going to be a lot of liquid spraying around. This liquid is also very hot, so there's steam and we don't want any of that in the cabin. It uh, also smells actually quite nasty. For this reason, we switch off engine bleed 1 and engine bleed 2. And also we have to switch off the APU bleed because that also sucks in air from the outside. Then we have to use the ditching push button. We've actually discussed this in another video of mine, but let me just remind you. The ditching push button has the function that it closes pretty much everything that has an opening to the outside world. So all kinds of vents and uh, valves are going to be closed now. And the idea is that if you ever have to land in water, you use that button and therefore the water can't get into the cabin. Well, probably not as fast as it would otherwise. So the idea is that if you land on water, the aircraft stays in one piece. By pushing this button, it will float longer. But according to Airbus, we can also use it now to make sure that no liquid comes into the cabin. You have to lift this guard, switch that on, close the guard. And that means that that procedure is completed and we are now ready for de-icing at the gate. Okay, so we're now sitting here, we're waiting for the liquid to be sprayed onto the wings, the stabilizers and maybe the fuselage, depending on what's going on outside. I do not own TSX. It's actually something I've been contemplating for a long time. Some people say it's absolutely worth it. Others say it's a lot of work to actually get it to work properly. So I'm not sure also with uh, MSFS 2024 now being out and they you know trying to fix it so they actually get it to run i'm not sure if it's actually necessary because some of the features are now in the sim so i don't know i will be thinking about this um, yeah anyway so i can't show you nice visuals we just have to imagine the aircraft is being de-iced now now once the ground crew informs you that the de-icing is complete the first thing you need to do is start the timer this is very important i will explain to you in a moment why okay so the ground crew has just informed us that the de-icing is complete we've started the timer and now we essentially do the same as we did before just in reverse order so we come back up here the ditching push button comes back off and after one minute from the end of the icing this is why we have started the timer so you need to wait a full minute you are allowed to switch on the engine bleeds then of course we need the apu bleed because we need that to start the engines but i'm afraid for that you have to wait five minutes and this is why it's important that you start the timer as soon as they tell you that the anti-icing has been completed. Because if you forget, then you start the timer then and then you have to sit here for five minutes before you can actually start the APU bleed. And before that, you actually can't do anything. You cannot do the push and engine start. So five minutes have elapsed. We can now switch on the APU bleed and from now on everything is as normal so we would now get ready for push and start uh, get the aircraft out to the runway and take off so that's the procedure for uh, doing the de-icing anti-icing at the gate okay we are now at munich airport different airport but the weather is just as bad and we are on our way to the runway and in Munich, they don't de-ice the aircraft at the gate. They de-ice it just at the runway holding point. So the de-icing pads are just here. We are going to runway 26 left. So you would uh, taxi in here. They would tell you where to stop, de-ice the aircraft, and then you taxi onto the runway and take off this way. Now, we've discussed a few of these things already in my video about uh, cold operations, so operations during the winter time. If you have snow and ice on the wing, do not move any flight control surfaces until the wing has been de-iced. 
So you don't touch anything, you leave the wing in a clean configuration until all the snow and ice has been removed and then and only then are you allowed to set the flaps and do a flight control check. This is to ensure no damage is done to the wing. Okay, we have arrived at the holding point. In this case, it's actually called the de-icing pad. So you first start uh, communicating with the de-icing staff. They make sure that everything is clear and they're gonna ask you, tell us when you are ready for de-icing. So once again, we start our procedure and our checklist. It's almost the same, just a few slight differences. Once again, make sure the parking brake is set. And then once again, we make sure that the cabin pressure selector is in auto. Let's come to the overhead panel. Uh, once again, engine one bleed, engine two bleed off. And of course, we make sure that the APU bleed is off, which it is because the APU has been switched off already. And finally, we once again switch on the ditching push button. Now you can tell the ground staff that you are ready for the icing and that they can start the procedure. Please note that with the engines running you will get an ECAM warning but this is perfectly normal and you are aware of it because we are the ones that switched off the bleed air. Of course another point very important, we do not want to damage any of the ground equipment, ensure that the thrust levers are in idle and remain in idle throughout the entire procedure. So the procedure is done, we are being told that the aircraft is now free of ice and frost. Once again start the timer down here and we do almost the same as before, so we go back to the overhead panel, so ditching push button off. You wait until one minute has elapsed. Once it has, you are allowed to switch off the engine one and engine two bleed. Now the difference here is now that we don't have the APU bleed running, which means you are now already cleared to carry on with your procedures. You can now set the flaps, go through all the checklists and then get onto the runway and take off. So this procedure in that respect is of course quicker and easier because you don't have the 5 minute wait for the APU bleed. And that is already that and we are already on our way onto the runway and we are already cleared for takeoff. Bit of a shorter video today but personally I like short videos. Uh, short and concise, taking you through what you need to do and uh, yeah. Regarding the checklists, I have actually never seen them online, but maybe you can just write them down as you go through the video and keep them next to you. So next time you want to simulate a de-icing, anti-icing procedure, you just follow that checklist. It's not very complicated, it's just a few things to consider. As always on the Airbus, there's always stuff to consider. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it interesting and yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. As always, until then, all the best. Bye bye.